I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. What would the world be like without black inventors? In our history, there is an unsung hero, a little known millionaire who taught Madam C.J. Walker and inspired her. And she herself became one of the first black millionaires at the turn of the century. Join us as we pay homage to this great hero, Miss Annie Malone. Born Annie Minerva Turnbow on August 9, 1869, in Metropolis, Illinois. She was the 10th of 11 children of Robert Turnbull and Isabel Cook Turnbull. Her parents died when she was young, and an older sister raised her in nearby Peoria. Although she did attend school, frequent illness caused her to withdraw from completing high school. As a young girl, Malone enjoyed fashioning her own and her sister's hair. She became aware of differences in hair texture and saw their way to straighten hair. During the 19th century, African-American women used soap, goose fat, and heavy oils to straighten their hair. Chemical straighteners often damaged the scalp and hair follicles. While living in Brooklyn, Illinois, around the turn of the century, Malone developed a chemical product that straightened African-American hair without damage. She studied chemistry, and she was influenced by an aunt who was trained as a herbal doctor. Her first storefront was located at Madison and 4th Street. She expanded her hair care line to include other beauty products, including popular Wonderful Hair Grower. She developed and patented the pressing comb, which is still in use today. This amazing invention has helped millions of African-American women. In 1902, Malone moved her business to St. Louis, Missouri, where she hired and trained three assistants. As black women, they were denied access to traditional distribution systems, so they sold their products door to door and provided free demonstrations. In 1903, Malone married Mr. Pope, but she divorced him after a short time because he tried to interfere with her business. Nothing was going to stop this determined young entrepreneur. During the 1904 World's Fair, Malone opened a retail outlet. Visitors to St. Louis responded favorably to her products, prompting her to embark on an innovative marketing campaign aimed at distributing the products nationally. In addition to going door to door, she and her trained assistants traveled to black churches and community centers, providing free hair and scalp treatments. She held press conferences and advertised in black newspapers. Malone traveled throughout the South at a time of racial discrimination and violence, giving demonstrations in black churches and women's groups. Everywhere she went, 
she hired and trained women to serve as local sales agents. They, in turn, recruited others. By 1910, distribution had expanded nationally. One of her recruits, and the best known, was a young lady by the name of Sarah Brelove Davis, who later went on to become Madam C.J. Walker. She was a former washerwoman who eventually founded her own company with similar beauty products and distribution. In 1914, Malone married Aaron Eugene Malone, an ex-teacher and Bible salesman. Her husband became the company's business chief manager and president. The young couple did more than just manufacture beauty products. They also provided a way for African-American women to improve themselves on many levels. At a time, when few career opportunities were available for African-American women, Poro offered a chance of an economic independence for African-American women. Ms. Malone believed that if African-American women improved their physical appearance, they would gain greater self-respect and achieve success in other areas of their lives. And she was not wrong. Poro is a West African word for an organization dedicated to disciplining and enhancing the beauty spiritually and physically. Mrs. Malone was committed to community building and social welfare. She built Poro College in 1918. This was a complex that included her business office, her manufacturing operation and training center as well as facilities for civic, religious, and social functions. The campus was located in St. Louis's upper middle class black neighborhood and served as a gathering place for the city's African Americans who were denied access to the other entertainment and hospitality venues. The complex, which was valued at more than $1 million, included classrooms, barbershops, laboratories, an auditorium, dining facilities, a theater, gymnasium, chapel, and a roof garden. Many local and national organizations, including the National Negro Business League, was housed in the facility or used it for business functions. The training center provided cosmetology and sales training for women interested in joining the Poro Agent Network. It also taught students how to walk, talk, and behave in social situations. During the 20th century, race improvement and positive self-image were seen as a way to increase social mobility. By teaching deportment, Malone believed she was helping African-American women improve their standing in the community. And she was not wrong. By 1926, the college employed 175 people. It franchised outlets in North and South America, Africa, and the Philippines. It also trained 75,000 women. I need to repeat that. The Annie Malone Poro School trained over 75,000 women. Women who went out on their own and sold her products and made a living, a decent living for themselves.
she had become a wealthy woman. It is believed that she was worth $14 million at one point during the 1920s. In 1924 alone, her income tax totaled nearly $40,000. She was a modest woman, and despite her wealth, Malone lived conservatively and gave away much of her fortune to help other African Americans. She is one of America's first major black philanthropists. Malone donated large sums to countless charities. At one point, it is believed that she was supporting two full-time students in every black land-grant college in the United States. She donated $25,000 to the Howard University Medical School during the 1920s. At that time, it was the largest gift the school had ever received from an African American. She also made generous contributions to Tuskegee Institute. She was a very generous woman, a woman who really believed in uplifting her race. This amazing entrepreneur developed products that was worth millions and helped countless families become self-sufficient during her era. Thank God, to this day, she is still remembered in St. Louis with the May Day parades held at the HBCUs in St. Louis every year. Miss Annie Malone was one of the first in Missouri to own a Rolls Royce. She owned an entire city block in Chicago. Her philanthropy is legendary. She gave out diamond rings for five years of service. This amazing inventor and entrepreneur was very generous with her family and employees as well. She educated many of her nieces and nephews and bought homes for her brothers and sisters. She awarded employees with lavish gifts for attendance, punctuality, service, anniversaries, and as rewards for investing in real estate. We here on this channel salute Miss Annie Malone for her great contribution to the African American society and to society at large. She proved that nothing can stop the power of a made-up mind. She also gave cash awards for saving accounts and home purchases. As stated earlier, she trained well over 75,000 women entrepreneurs in her schools. And oh yeah, she also trained the legendary Miss Madam C.J. Walker. This amazing lady does not get the credit she deserves. She left a blueprint for us to follow and to let us know that we can achieve anything that we put our mind to. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, thou art rich.